So amongst a vast collection of magnolias here at the National Botanic Gardens, Kilmacurra, I want to pick three choices, and they're my favorite choices at the moment, of what's looking really good and what potentially you could grow in your own gardens, whether they're large or, sm or small gardens. So my first choice is the Southern Magnolia, or the, the Bull Bay uh, Magnolia Grandiflora. So it is one of the very first magnolias to be cultivated in European gardens. Um, it was it had reached France and was growing in Nantes as early as 1711. It wasn't named, it wasn't given its Latin binomial until 1759 uh, by Carl Linnaeus Magnolia Grandiflora, which very aptly describes the flowers of this species. Um, it's a summer flowered evergreen uh, species. You get these large, lovely, sort of fleshy flowers, white, beautifully scented, um, and it prefers warmer climates. So it is native to the southeast states of the United States. Um, it's the state flower of Mississippi. Um, and in, its, in the early colonization of that part of America, the early colonists uh, would grow it in front of their homesteads. And very often what they would do is plant a, a young sapling, let it grow on just like this, and then push the branches down and layer them. And this tree is incredibly wind resistant. So it meant that the, the main tree with these layers anchoring it into the ground, they could withstand the effects of a tornado and it protected the, 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 uh, the house behind there. And in a coastal garden like Kilmacurry, that's very important. Uh, we're not far from the open sea here. Wind is a, a driving factor in what we plant here. Magnolia Campbelli, our big old tree, very often has branches ripped from it in a storm. This is absolutely wind resistant. So why would you grow it? Um, the, one of the, our sort of main reasons for growing this here is because we have this lovely warm coastal climate, it's got a very long season of interest. So it will flower here from July right up until early December. And by careful choice of magnolia planting, in this garden we can grow and we can have magnolias in flower anytime from February with Magnolia Campbelli, for example, right up until early December. It's an incredibly long season of, of interest. Many of these magnolias, I should say as well, are important medicinal plants. Um, so if you're in China, for example, the Huan Po Magnolia officinalis is used uh, for various different ailments. This particular species was seized upon very early by Native Americans and it was the bark of, of it uh, was used for, for, for treating sores, for rashes uh, and so on. Uh, but going back to horticulture uh, for a moment, in Ireland, because uh, our climate, we're slightly insular, we don't get that much sunshine, we've got to be very careful Careful on the what we, for particular selections of Magnolia grandiflora uh, we grow in our gardens, and you're better to in Ireland to plant selected cultivars that are, are proven to flower uh, because of our lack of heat. If you go to places like Italy and Spain and Portugal and warmer parts of the world, that's not a problem, and it makes a huge tree. But here we grow, for example, this is Magnolia grandiflora victoria and it's got uh, these lovely sort of rust colored undersides to the leaves not just that so you get these lovely evergreen glossy foliage all year round as well it flowers really really well with us actually you get these great big bowl shaped white flowers beautifully scented another that we grow here is magnolia grandiflora exmout it's one of the oldest of the english cultivars it was introduced to gardens very very early so it's tried and tested we grow it against a wall here it flowers right up until almost christmas for us in very mild weather um, wonderful wafts of scent as, as as you pass down past our wall garden so this is magnolia grandiflora uh, and it's certainly one that's worth growing uh, once you can give it a warm sheltered spot that's south facing and it bakes and gets heat in your gardens. So for my next choice, I'm gonna choose a hybrid. Now this is Magnolia J.C. Williams. And one of the reasons, uh, and one of the important reasons for growing hybrids in your garden is that you avoid the long wait before they come into flower. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the old tree of Magnolia Campbelli here took 31 years before it produced a single blossom. And you can see this is a young plant, it's less than two meters tall, and it's already covered in these lovely buds. So this is a cross involving Magnolia sprengeri diva and Magnolia sargentiana var robusta, two exceptionally good parents. Um, and within the next week or so, you're gonna see this eruption of flowers 
in bud just as it opens. It's almost black and then it opens to, to the colour of port wine. These great chalices to about that size. So who is J.C. Williams? John Charles Williams uh, was a gr one of the greatest woodland gardeners of the early 20th century. Um, he began this lavish garden around his home at Kerhays uh, from the about the 1910s onwards. He sponsored a lot of the great plant hunters. Um, and today, when you visit Kerhays, it's got one of the biggest magnolia collections in the world, over 600 species and cultivars. So we have much to thank the Williams family for, and this is one that that certainly is worthwhile, Magnolia J.C. Williams. So it's important to know that not all magnolias are great big forest trees. There are magnolias out there that will suit every garden size. So I'm choosing one now that will suit small urban gardens uh, with today's growing conditions. Uh, so this is Magnolia fairy blush. It's a lovely plant, doesn't grow much bigger than three meters tall. Um, it's evergreen and you can see it is absolutely covered in these lovely rust-colored buds at the moment. But by mid-March, they will have expanded and erupted into these lovely lilac pink blossoms. Very beautifully scented. You can use it in numerous different ways. So another way that it has been used is if you plant it as a flowering hedge, just plant a whole group together. You can shear it just after flowering, allow it to form next year's flowering buds, and you get this lovely flowering hedge covered with wafts of scent. So this is Magnolia Fairy Blush. Um, remember as well that it's got a very long season of flowering, so it will flower, as I say, from mid-March, but right through until late, late autumn. So I hope you can join us during Magnolia Week for some of our events. Our walk here at Kilmacurra on Friday the 10th. Um, Jim Gardner's talk at Glasnevin on Saturday the, the 11th. You'll get details of the various events uh, from our website. <laughs>